Welcome to another one of our interviews that's completely unscripted, unrehearsed and off the top of our heads where we're going all around the country to various meetings, demonstrations and meeting the most wonderful people that are fighting to get our sovereignty back to our country. Um, today we're actually in the home of John Kelly who's the Southwest Regional Press Officer for the United Kingdom Independence Party in the Southwest. Uh, he does a brilliant job coordinating us with his emails badgering us to write letters and keeping us up to date with the latest news, whatever. And he's today been organising the regional assembly demonstration in Exeter at the County Hall. Uh, we've had a lot of people outside there waving placards and we've had the BBC recording us and made a big show for the cameras. And hopefully, if anybody out there feels as strongly as we do about this issue... Come and join us next time. For those not aware, regional assemblies are a tool of the European Union. The European Union is actually the European Union of the regions. And what they are doing, in a nutshell, is splitting up England into nine regions. Each of those regions has an assembly. And through that assembly come the diktats and rules from Brussels, uh, funding from Brussels going both ways from us to them, and... Eventually, the idea is that they wipe out Parliament altogether because we'll be run by the assemblies. They're also dissolving the local councils very, very slowly, bit by bit, so you don't notice. But going, they are. Um, they're unelected and unwanted, and that's basically the story of the regional assembly. Now, connected to that, as I said, we're here with John Kelly, and he's one of our wonderful seniors who are fighting the system and he has recently been to court for non-payment of community tax and I'll hand you over so he can tell you why this is associated with regional assemblies. Over to you, John. The regional assemblies uh, are, have been put in place uh, by central government uh, with the knowledge and collaboration of local councils and they are funded in part by central government and in part by subscriptions from our local councils. Now, councils are, exist primarily to provide us with local services for which we pay, such as emptying garbage bins, keeping the roads clean, and so on, uh, edu police, education, and so on. And uh, it's um, uh, implicit in that type of tax uh, it's, a, it's a property tax uh, and it's implicit that uh, it is for those local services. Uh, other taxes, uh, such as income tax, goes to central government and covers other issues, other bigger issues of a national importance. But those local councils are uh, to serve the community and have the power to tax the community for those services. Now, the regional assemblies... Um, are quangos. They are populated by volunteers, some of whom, it is true, uh, are elected as councillors uh, in another sphere, uh, but who volunteer to serve as members of the Assembly. Um, and the balance of the members of the Assembly are volunteers from uh, various sectors of the community. They're called social, economic and environmental partners. And they are what is euphemistically termed as stakeholders. It's a term that isn't readily recognisable. Now, the uh, assemblies, as I said, gather part of their income from councils. And, of course, the councils get their money from us taxpayers. The reasoning behind our protest in withholding a portion of our council tax is that it is illegal for the councils to use that tax for such a purpose. Uh, as Fern has said, the uh, assemblies are unwanted, they are unelected, they are unaccountable, and more worryingly, uh, they are immune from the Freedom of Information Act. So uh, we, the taxpayer and voter, uh, uh, can't uh, easily track what it is they're doing. They are, in effect, beyond the reach of the voter. Now, under our constitution, 
which goes back to Magna Carta in 1215 and the Bill of Rights in 1689, a very firm principle in that constitution is that only public bodies, elected public bodies, can tax the public purse. Uh, failure to follow that uh, principle uh, caused us to lose a colony um, and uh, that's a very great regret that that should happen to us, of course. Um, but um, the, uh, that principle is enshrined in the phrase, no taxation without representation. So uh, under our democratic system, we agree to be governed and taxed by people for whom we vote and can dismiss. Now, in the case of these regional assemblies, which are putative regional governments, uh, we, they tax us, but we can't vote for them. And that's a fundamental breach of our constitution. Uh, my wife and I have therefore been withholding a portion of our council tax until such time as the local authority can uh, demonstrate to us that it is legal for them to use our council tax for funding this putative regional government, for which they have the they the councils and the council laws have no mandate. They have never presented the case to us uh, for regional government. They never uh, mention it in their annual reports. Um, they claim that they have the discretion to fund this project uh, under the terms of the Local Government Act, uh, whereby they can, quote, do anything we like with council tax as long as we believe it's for the benefit of the community, unquote. Now, they have made no attempt to quantify uh, any such benefits. Uh, no cost-benefit analysis has been done by any uh, governmental body in this country, right up to national level. Uh, national governments have persistently refused to conduct and publish cost-benefit analyses of uh, the UK's membership of the European Union. The, any independent analyses that have been done by the think tanks uh, have, all, have all conclusively uh, shown that there is no benefit to the UK uh, of our membership of the EU. We could be outside of the EU, we could be trading with the EU, the same as uh, the USA and 92 other countries. We do not have to be ruled by the EU uh, to do business with them. So, um, our local council um, has been unwilling or unable uh, to demonstrate that uh, what they do with the council tax in supporting this project is for our benefit. We have therefore maintained that it is illegal for them to do it uh, and as soon as they stop doing it or can demonstrate properly that it is legal, uh, we will withhold the tax. So it sounds quite drastic. Um, for people out there, if this really touches a chord with you, do something about it. You know, for evil to flourish, all it needs is for good people to do nothing. And there are a lot of people out here, like John and his wife, who are really trying very hard to do things to save our country, to get our sovereignty back. And it doesn't matter, just do anything, join something. Join the United Kingdom Independence Party, if that isn't to your taste, join um, any organization. You'll find them all over the internet. Just make this a loud, loud voice. And let's back up people like John and his wife who are really making a stand because they're doing it for you and the country. They're not doing it for themselves. So that's it. Join something and let's, let's be strong. Do something, make a loud, loud noise and tell them what we really, really think. Thank you very much, John. I'd just like to endorse uh, Fern's remarks about doing something. Uh, it's becoming increasingly difficult to do anything uh, in this uh, day and age uh, because of uh, media influence, uh, one's ability to get a point of view across to uh, the population. And uh, there are very, very few ways in which private individuals can get their views aired uh, it is now becoming increasingly difficult to demonstrate, uh, particularly in London, which is the traditional place of such demonstrations, as oppressive legislation now forbids 
any assemblies uh, within, I believe, half a mile of the Palace of Westminster. And uh, uh, we've had uh, several examples here in England in the last uh, two years of very large attempts at demonstrations, um, but they are not allowed to get near the Palace of Westminster. Uh, just last year, uh, the uh, people who uh, the country people who were in favour of fox hunting uh, got too near the Palace of Westminster, and a very very heavy-handed uh, police force uh, set about them uh, in, in a manner which was quite unjustified and quite frightening and quite alien to our traditional methods of demonstrating and exerting our right to free speech and, and demonstration. And uh, um, it's, it's much more uh, akin now to the continental environment uh, where you have uh, what is virtually a police state and the individual uh, has very few powers. And coming back to the council tax uh, issue, um, it's the only way, I believe, of peacefully demonstrating uh, to the authorities that you are dissatisfied uh, with the status quo. Uh, in some way. Um, it's the one tax which they have to ask you to pay as opposed to deducting it at source. So uh, there are many groups including for example uh, here in Devon the Pen Devon Pensioners Action Forum uh, who are pursuing a, a similar technique uh, or a similar tactic of withholding this tax. It's the only tax they can withhold their particular cause is for a reasonable pension from the state. Um, and uh, they are determined to uh, get uh, 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 a decent treatment from the state, which they're entitled to. And they are now threatening to uh, withhold uh, the tax in full uh, if they don't get satisfaction within a certain time. Thank you. Uh, I just put a little word on the end here. Uh, it's a quote, a very loose quote from my favourite film, V for Vendetta. And it says that fairness, justice and freedom are not just words, they're perspectives. And we're all born free. It's our, it's our birthright. Our freedom is our birthright. And all these wonderful people that are, are doing this stuff to um, keep a freedom for all of us, not just for themselves have chosen freedom. I choose freedom. John's chosen freedom. What do you choose? Thank you.